In this video, we are gonna talk about 10 tips, tricks, and secrets that everyone should know in the 3D world, and if you consider yourself an advanced user, don't worry, I'm pretty sure there will be some interesting ones in this list that will improve your workflow. If you're new here, this is architecture topics and here we talk about architecture representation and visualization. So don't forget to subscribe to not miss out on any future videos. With that being said, let us start. First up, and I'm sure you probably heard about this one, the 80-20 rule, so most of us when we were introduced to the 3D world, we get overwhelmed by the number of things we need to learn, tools, commands and modifiers, however, you most likely need less than 20% of them to achieve most of your work, and from this come the rule 8020, which is more of a life rule and not only for architecture field, so once you're focused on your area of expertise, you will find yourself using less and less tools while getting the results you need. This next one in line is for beginners, and we've all been there, seeing all the amazing work on your feed, and thinking about how great if you can pull something like that and share it around, now whether it is an animation, simulation or any kind of still render, you need to pause for a second, and ask yourself an important question, is this work you want to do achievable with your machine capability, if not, then keep it simple mate. And I say that since I've seen a number of beginner artists who want to jump right away in making long animations or even cinematic renders, and while I don't doubt anyone's skill, you need to stop and see the render time, that might change your perspective. This one is quite important in our field, and even if you're an advanced user, there will be a time when you kinda forget about this, which gonna cost you extra time. So to understand what we're talking about, in every 3D software, you will find this camera object, and with it you can identify an area to capture an image or get an animation out of it, so once you entered the camera mode, your workspace will be divided by two factors, things inside the camera frame, and things outside, and while sometimes the last one can affect your lighting, there's no need to spend any time modeling or shaping irrelevant objects that won't show in the final render. That's why if you are working on architecture scene, and after you achieved the basic modeling process, you need to stop everything and set up your camera position, to figure out where to work and what to focus on. Lost in details, this one probably happens more than you think, and it's easy to forget about it once you're focused on some area, and just want to keep adding more details to it. After that you woke up and realized that in your fixed shot, the area you've been working on is quite small, and will not show that much in the final render. That happens to me many times especially in creating environments, and will probably happen to you every once in a while, so learn to take a pause during your work process, and look around to see how this going, hopefully you will make it as a habit not to overwork yourself. The next two tips is quite related to each other, and the reason this one says don't repeat the render process, is because when we finish the render process to get the result we need, it can sometimes be missing some elements that we forget to add or adjust, and while some people will jump into re-rendering it which can take more time than what you have to spare, there are always easy steps which you can use to fix your final render image or even present it better. Is the 3D software enough for you to present your work? The answer is no. There's an entire process called post-production, and this one goes after the render process. That's why it is not a good idea to re-render your scene or image, since you can always fix it easily in the post-process. We usually with architecture visualization go and fix the lighting in the scene using different type of softwares, and that will help us show our work in a better way. The next tip goes for both interior and exterior scenes, and it does not mean that you should not learn about night lighting, it is just more easy to set up your daylight while focusing on your modeling skills. 
and as to my knowledge, most of the main 3D softwares gives you a simple process to mimic a real skylight, which can be set up in considerably less time than night scenes, so if you are aiming to be an expert in modeling, stick with the daylight while doing that, it can save you quite the time while presenting your shots in a great way. This next one is more of a process rather than a tip, and as you might know, in any type of architecture work, there are steps and points that you should pay attention to, and for interior design, once we done with 2D drawing, the 3D process will go in this direction, modeling, lighting, materials and then adding the models to finish your scene, following those steps will save you both the time and effort while keeping your mind sharp, and they easy to follow. So once you make it in two or three projects, it will become more of a good habit, so make it like that sooner than later, it is always important to keep things organized in this work field. Next in line is the exterior designing steps. And you might think it's similar to the interior ones, but it's not. With this process, we usually start by blocking our scene, and finish any kind of modeling we have in mind. Then we jump to adding the assets, in specific the street models that can affect the shadow and lighting in the scene, and that goes for trees, green vegetations, trash bins and cars. Then once we finish adding those assets, we can set up our skylight, and make it cast the shadows around, then we make the materials to finish the scene, and with that we can get some cool renders from this process. This last one is meant especially for beginners or anyone coming to this 3D world. In any area or software you're working on, you will find a great community that can provide you with the guide and help you need to work your problems out. And in 3D architecture field, the problems don't end. There are also some who think that you need to make everything in this field from scratch, and that is not true, using your community resources whether it's assets library, informations or ideas is quite a good path to grow as artist. So next time you're making a room, don't be shy to use a free asset you find online, or borrow a material, it's a way to figure out your style while experimenting. And that's it guys, hope this video adds some knowledge to your 3D experience, and as always, stay sharp, goodbye.